Hello, my name is Frank Hill. I'm going to talk today about Jeanne Colmo. She was French, that's why we pronounce her name that way. She was a perfect example of what happens when everything goes right in terms of living a very long time. Here's a photo of her taken on her 100th birthday. I suspect this photo was taken by a newspaper reporter. She was um, even older than 100 when she did finally give up smoking and the smoking never killed her. It killed some people, but not everyone. Jeanne Colmo was one of the lucky ones. But first I'll tell you a story. When Jeanne Colmo was 90 years old, she found herself broke. That can happen when you get to be very old, your money runs out. She was a widow, she had no surviving heirs, both her only child, her daughter had died, and her only grandchild had also died before her. So she had no one to leave her money or her possessions to. She had one major asset and that was her apartment. So she entered into a reverse mortgage with a lawyer. The lawyer agreed to give her money, 2,500 francs, every month until she died. In exchange, the apartment would go to the lawyer once Jean Como died. And of course, this is a great deal for the lawyer because statistically, she's likely to drop dead at any moment. I guess some people would even say that they're taking advantage of an old lady, but I guess it was worthwhile for her too because she was broke. The old lady didn't die. Ten years later, Jean Calmo became a centenarian. She turned 100. She was still alive. The poor lawyer was still paying the money. Another ten years later, Jean Calmo was still alive. She was a super centenarian. That means she was 110. And the poor lawyer, the poor lawyer by now had paid more than the value of the house. But she was still alive then and, yes, even another 10 years later, at the age of 120, she was still alive. By then, the lawyer had died and the lawyer's widow was making the payments to Jeanne Colmo every month. And of course, by that time, the lawyer and his widow had paid Sean Calmo twice the value of the apartment. It was very, a very bad choice by the lawyer, as it turns out. Jean Calmo lived to be 122 years old. That's the oldest anyone has ever lived. At least it's the oldest anyone has lived for whom we have absolute evidence. A lot of other people have claimed to have lived older, but usually examination shows that those claims are hugely exaggerated. But there were plenty of records of Jean Como's birth, so we know for certain that that's how old she was. She was 122 when she died. She was the oldest person by quite a margin, quite a few years. In fact, we'll see, the oldest person alive at the moment is only 116. That's, um, what, six years? Six years younger than Shannon Calmo was when she died. She was so old that she remembers things like the Eiffel Tower being built, and she remembers meeting Vincent van Gogh. Jean Camo became famous in France when she was 113 because she was the last person alive who remembered meeting Vincent van Gogh. She met him when she was a small girl. She met him in her father's store. She described him as disagreeable and smelly. 
She set a lot of records. When she was 116, she became the oldest person in the world, possibly not the oldest person ever at that point. She was the last person alive who was born in the 1870s. Remember, she was born in 1875. She was the first person to ever turn 120. And as we said, the oldest person ever by the age of 122. This photo shows Jeanne Calmeau back in 1915 when she was already middle-aged. That's back during World War I, Jeanne Calmeau was already middle-aged and yet she lived on until 1997. So we could reasonably ask, why did she live so long? And it is just because a number of important factors all came together in Jeanne Calmeau. First, she inherited the right genes. She got very lucky. She was born with the right genes. Her father lived to be very old. And her father probably died around 1945. Back then, it was incredibly rare for a man to reach an age like that. So he did have very good genes. Her mother also had good genes. And no doubt, Jeanne Calmeau inherited the best of the genes from both parents. Her brother Francois also lived to be quite old. That was the first thing she did right. Let's see what else she did right. She was born female. If you want to live to be very old, make sure you're born female. I took this table from Wikipedia. This is actually a table of super centenarians, people aged 110 or older. But I've taken just the top of the table, the first seven, because these seven people are the seven people left in the world who were born in the 1800s. This table is actually about three weeks old, so this table may have changed by now. This table, almost every time I look at it, there's less names on it. But notice they're all female. And in fact, on that table of super centenarians in Wikipedia, there are 61 names in all, and 59 of those names are female. If you want to live a long time, make sure you're born female. Also, make sure you're born in a first world country, a technologically advanced country, a country like United States or Western Europe, Japan, Hong Kong, any technologically advanced country. Because again, all of the super centenarians in the world lived in first world countries. I went through that list of super centenarians, the ones alive today, to see where they were born. You'll see most of them were born in just two places, United States and Japan. The reason there's so many born in Japan is because Japan has the highest life expectancy of any country. The United States doesn't have a very high life expectancy compared to other first world countries. But it's a very big country. It has a very large population. And that's why it has so many super centenarians. You'll see all the other countries with super centenarians, whether it's Sweden or Australia, Spain, United Kingdom, they're all first world countries, technologically advanced countries. In countries like this, as well as better health care, of course you have better access to food, you have less disease, better sanitation, all the factors are there to help you live a long time.
Jean Camus was also born at the right time. Throughout most of human history, humans have lived short lives. If you go back far enough, humans were only living 20 or 30 years on average. Even 100 years ago, people were only living to be 30 or 40 years old on average. That doesn't mean there weren't old people in those days. There were old people, but of course, there was very high infant mortality. So the average life expectancy was very low. And it's only recently that we've got people that are very old, like Sean Calmo. Sean Calmo was rich. She never had to work. Studies show that if you want to live a long time, you should be rich. Jeanne Camo did it the right way. She married someone who was rich. Her husband was a wealthy store owner. So she never had to work. She never had the stress of working. And in her spare time, what do you see? Lots of exercise. Again, isn't that the perfect way to live a long time? No stress, lots of exercise. I've never read anywhere that Sean Calmo was mentally ill or wasn't mentally ill. But I'll go out on a limb here and I'll say probably she wasn't mentally ill. Simply because people with mental illness tend to die much younger than other people. 25 years younger, that's a lot. And I know you probably immediately think it's suicide. They're all killing themselves, that's why they're dying early. But no, it's not. No, it's mostly lifestyle diseases. They're dying young because their arteries are clogging up from bad eating, or they're dying from lung cancer, from smoking. It's all the lifestyle diseases that kill them early. People with mental illness, so often they don't die directly because of their mental illness. But if they didn't have the mental illness, they wouldn't have died so young. Jean Calmo wasn't fat. Think about the oldest person you've ever known. I'll guarantee you that she was thin. Think about any person you know, aged 90 or older. Again, I'll guarantee you that person was not fat. Fat people don't live to be old people. If you want to live to be 122, stay thin. Not too thin, not anorexic, but but just right. Reporters, of course, used to always ask her, how did you live so long? And they would never get a straight answer from her. On the internet, I found all these different answers that she gave. It's because she had a glass of port a day. Studies do show that one glass of alcohol a day helps you live, a, live longer than someone who doesn't drink or someone who drinks more than that. So that might be a factor. She ate chocolate every day. She ate lots of olive oil. She smiled and laughed a lot. She had a good sense of humour. And studies also show the smiling, the good sense of humour, the happy disposition. That helps you live a long time too. She did smoke. And you might be saying, how could she smoke and live so long? But remember, smoking only kills half the people who smoke. She was obviously one of the other half. She was the lucky half the half that are not killed by her smoking. That is partly inherited. Whether or not you will die from your smoking is, to an extent, inherited. She probably didn't inherit a predisposition to die from smoking. I told you she had a happy disposition and a good sense of humour. She used to say, I've only got one wrinkle and I'm sitting on it. There you are. That's how to live to be very, very old. Simple, isn't it?